All right, time to get ready for our unit two test. Uh, the first one, this is attributes of the parent function. f of x equals absolute value of x. Uh, that's the parent function that starts at zero, zero, and my slope is one. Not the best graph, but that'll work. All right, my domain is all row numbers for every absolute value. Uh, my range on this one, it starts at zero, touching zero, and going all the way up to infinity. Uh, this one is a lowest point. It's my minimum. Since we're talking about lowest to highest point, that's going to be my y value. That's height. And so my y value, my y value is going to be the zero right there. Uh, these two things should go together. Uh, symmetry is going to be x equals, and it comes from the vertex, so 0. This is my line of symmetry right here. Increasing. Uh, this is how it's increasing and decreasing from left to right. Um, and so this goes off the x axis. And so the first one, I look on the left side, that has a negative slope, so this one is decreasing over here, splits right here, and it's increasing on this side. So it's going to be decreasing from negative infinity all the way to zero, and then increasing from zero to positive infinity. Now we haven't had you do this a lot on, on all of these, but you do need to know this for the parent function. The x and y intercept are both at zero. It starts at the origin, zero, zero. All right, number two. My vertex is going to shift right two and up three. So one, two, one, two, three. And if you ever struggle with this, put this in the calculator. See what the calculator tells us. Uh, the negative tells me it's going to open down. It reflects over the x-axis. And the one-half is my new slope. So down one over two. Down one over two. Down one over two. Here's my graph. Again, domain is all real numbers. Uh, my range, this one's going downward, so it's going to start at negative infinity and work its way up to 1, 2, 3. The highest point is 3. Uh, this one is a maximum point. It's the highest point, and it's 3. Again, works off the y. Uh, symmetry, 1, 2, x equals 2. It's right here where x equals 2. Increasing and decreasing. On this one, it has a positive slope, so it's going to increase on this side, split, and decrease on this side. So we're going to increase from negative infinity to where x is 2, and then pick back up at 2 all the way to infinity. All right, number 3. Uh, no left or right, just down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, my slope is 3, so 1, 2, 3, 1. Domain, all the numbers, my range has a lowest point, so a lowest point of negative 4 all the way up to infinity. So my lowest point of negative 4 symmetry is x equals 0, the y-axis. Uh, this one is decreasing, splits right here, and then increasing. So we're going to decrease from negative infinity to 0, and then pick back up 0 to infinity on increasing. Number four, uh, the last graph. Uh, on this one, it's going to shift left four and up five. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. There's my new vertex. Uh, the slope, it is negative. So it's going to open downward and it's negative one. Domain is all real numbers. Uh, my range starts at negative infinity and works its way up to 5. 
so it has a maximum of 5. Uh, symmetry is right here at x equals negative 4. Uh, this is going to be increasing on this side and decreasing on this side, a positive slope and then a negative slope. And so negative infinity to negative 4 and then negative 4 to infinity. All right, number five, uh, we're doing absolute value of x. We're going to stretch it by a factor of two. That goes in front. Shift four units to the right. So that's going to go inside with the x, x minus four. Uh, so again, f of x, absolute value has a domain of all real numbers. So that's everything. And a range of negative three to infinity. This tells me two things. The lowest point is negative three and the highest point is infinity, so it's going to be opening up, which means it's going to have a positive number in front. I can pick any number I want, so I'll just pick 3. Absolute value of x. It doesn't tell me anything about left or right, so I technically could pick any number and put it in here. I'll just pick 8. Um, and then a range of negative 3, so we need to drop down 3. And so there's infinitely possible, uh, infinitely possible answers on this one. I just need to see a positive in the front, minus 3 in the back, these two numbers could be anything you want. All right, number seven. On this one, we're just listing transformations. So 0.75, that's lower than one. There's going to be a vertical compress, a vertical compression uh, by 0.75. Uh, we're going to go right seven and up four. Uh, that negative is going to be a reflection over x. The 3 is greater than 1, and so that is going to be a vertical stretch. We're going to go left 1 and down 9. All right, number 9, we get into solving. Remember, our first step is isolate the absolute value. So on this one, the absolute value is already isolated, then we branch it. So we isolate, then we branch x minus 4 equals 12 x minus 4 equals negative 12, and we solve. So I'm going to add 4 on both sides to get rid of that 4. x equals 16. That's one answer. Add 4 over here. Negative 12 plus 4 is going to be negative 8. All right, on the next one, uh, we're going to subtract 4.4 first because we need to isolate the absolute value. change this to be negative 3 tenths, it's the same thing, negative 0.3, and so we're going to divide by negative 3 tenths, or we're going to multiply by negative 10 over 3, and so we'll get rid of that, absolute value of x plus 2.5 is equal to, let's see, that's going to be negative 40, and again, you could use your calculator for this, divide by negative 0.3, you should get the same thing. Um, but now I'm going to stop because absolute value cannot be negative. Absolute value is always positive. And so this cannot happen. It's no solution. All right. Our next one.